Welcome to the interview series where the mission of this podcast is to add value to as many people as possible. As a realtor, investor, and consumer, I know firsthand there's a lot of information out there and not a lot of time to verify and consume it. So I created this podcast to ensure you have the resources, information, and knowledge to alleviate any stress as it relates to real estate, finances, and more. With that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, today it's an honor to interview and introduce uh, Rebecca Marano. Am I saying that right? Marino. Marino. That's okay. So, Marino. Um, uh, uh, essentially, you're an escrow officer, born and raised in, or raised in Sonoma County, married your high school sweetheart, uh, two young girls. Um, I thought that's, which is amazing, two young girls. I have one myself, so Aww. I'm all, I'm a girl dad. Right on. Um, we spent a decade in high-end travel industry while mm-hmm. doing radio ad, ads as a voiceover actor. That's, that's impressive. I Thank love it. You. So you're ready. You're ready for this video. I <laughs> this love it. It seems different with cameras, I but know, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's all good, but no, that's, that's really interesting. Um, also, we worked as a childbirth assistant, stepping into uh, before stepping into um, you know the being an escrow officer mm-hmm. with uh, first Com- first American Title. How long did you do the childbirth assistant? Um, between travel okay. and what I do now, I I've done probably less than twenty births. Okay. So I did it for a couple of years, and now wow. I still help friends and family when they need it. Wow, that's amazing! I love that. And your philosophy, obviously, to provide meaningful customer meaningful customer service, which comes from your heart. So yeah, that um, has really tied in every job I've ever had um, uh-huh. in my adult life. I find that the the core of it is. I serve um, with a servant's heart. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. And that's primarily why you're here because um, I want to bring on people that are in particular roles that are just good people who have a good heart and essentially are genuine. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Of course, of course. And so let's jump into it, right? Um, You know, as as an escrow officer, Mm -hmm. I think if I'm a consumer... I'm like, what is that? <laughs> right. Nobody so, like, knows. so knows. while you're here, you're going to be repping all escrow officers around the world. <laughs> no pressure, but like, <laughs> let's start with a really simple question. What, like, what is it? What's your role in the real estate transaction? Yeah. So, in our area, which is Northern California, yeah. we have title and escrow, okay. and they tend to go hand in hand. So, in some places, that's not true. You'll have title insurance okay. and escrow okay. as separate um, offices and separate functions. Got it. But here. Um, the title company handles the escrow processes as well. So okay. we provide title insurance okay. to, provec- uh, to protect a homeowner's interest in their property okay. or a lender's interest in a property. Got it. And we also facilitate the logistics of the whole closing. Okay. Okay. So you're, it's, it's safe to say you're you're a pretty integral part of the process, right? Yes, we're very important. Yeah, I love it. I know you're <laughs> you're important for me. Um, like so, who chooses? Uh, it might be a you know remedial question here, but you know I, I'm curious. Like, who chooses a title company? Mm-hmm. Well, it is the buyer who has the choice. Although, as you know, a lot is up for negotiation. So, okay. if a seller really has a firm preference on an escrow officer that they enjoy working with, okay. and that is important to the seller as well, they can negotiate for that. Okay, got it. And then, who pays for? You mentioned title insurance mm-hmm. earlier. Um, and you all just mentioned negotiations, but like typically who, who pays for the title insurance? The buyer typically. Typically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And then w- I guess why, why should they purchase title insurance? Like what's the importance of that? Sure. Them? So I could talk about this all day. I yeah. won't, okay. but, um, we have, um, probably close to a hundred examples and reasons, um, that an owner should have title insurance to protect you from yeah. losing your home. Um, so yeah. there are all kinds of different title issues that can crop up that could cost you money. Okay. Um, and the worst of them could actually cause you to lose your home. So those would be defects in title that were missed in the past, possibly okay. deeds from one person to another that okay. would um, kind of put a defect in the chain of title so that the person an owner bought their home from maybe really wasn't the rightful person to sell it in the first place. Ah, uh, got it. That makes sense. Okay. So and that's so, just one example. Yeah. Okay. And then, I mean, essentially, it's, it's, you're protecting yourself, right? From... You're protecting yourself. And then 
As far as title insurance, one of the cool things about it is it protects the owner, okay. but because we're a title insurance company, we're selling insurance, one of our key functions is risk mitigation. So it, it behooves us to prevent um, any mistakes being made because we don't want claims in the future. You know, that would be bad. That comes off our bottom line. Yeah. So therefore, we do everything we can to make sure everything's done as cleanly as possible, as accurately as possible, yeah. and that protects every single party to the transaction. Action. Yeah. Because um, when things go bad, people hire their lawyers and come after anybody they can. Wow. And if there's a title company involved, they come after us instead yeah. of you. That's huge. Instead of the buyer, the seller, the broker. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge. It's all about the protection. I like That's that. Right. Um, and so it seems as though the escrow, I know you, I guess I can ask the question that how much communication do you have with the buyer? That is something that's determined by the agent. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you come to me and you have an escrow open, I kind of see you as my primary client. Okay. And then your customer is kind of my secondary client. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to do what you say. Um, okay. Escrow officers follow instructions. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. we do. We follow the written and verbal instructions on from everybody in the transaction. Okay. And we'll talk to the customers as much or as little as the agents prefer. I personally am happy to talk to buyers and sellers about every step of the transaction that I am aware of, yeah. um, as some agents prefer to be the primary contact. Got it. And so essentially, you're, you're, I don't wanna say hands off, but it just depends, right? It and depends. so um, for the average consumer, the average person that, whether they haven't purchased their first, first home and they're looking to, or they have a ton of homes and they're mm -hmm. looking to you know, get into you know, increasing, increasing and, um, I guess increasing increasing is not the right word, but just you know, um, I guess increasing the real estate portfolio, right? Yeah. What like tell me more about the like, about the escrow side, like behind the scenes, you know, what what don't the buyers know that you're doing, right? Right. Oh, so much. I love this question because yeah. um, I feel like people don't know what it is that's going on. They don't know what um, the escrow process really means. They know they get into contract, and yeah. you know, standard time is thirty days why 30 days? Why do we have to wait? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yeah. Well, there can be, depending on the property, a lot of things going on behind okay. the scenes. So okay. because we are combining the title aspect and the escrow portion together, um, an escrow officer is simultaneously clearing title issues. Uh, so there could be liens or encumbrances on a property. Mm -hmm. And by the end, when we close escrow, it's my job to present um, a property with free and clear title okay. to our new homeowners. So we have to order demands for things like child support judgments. Oh, wow. Um, you know, the seller will have a mortgage typically, not always, but often, so we'll have to order payoff demands to make sure that we pay that off at the close of escrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, there's a lot of the title clearing work that's being done. And then also we're doing the, the classic escrow process, yeah. which is gonna be, um, managing the funds, yeah. drawing up the documents, drawing up the deeds and yeah. sometimes other legal documents, okay. um, and then facilitating the recordation of those documents at the close of escrow, putting uh, a home in a new buyer's name, for instance. How would you explain, let's just say you're talking, you, you're, you're working with me and I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, full communication with the, uh, with the buyer. Mm -hmm. and, and someone asked you, because you mentioned it earlier, um, you said encumbrances and liens, like what if they don't know what that is? What, what, how would you explain mm -hmm. that to them? What, what's that and why is that getting in the way of me purchasing this home? Right, yeah. so we want to make sure that the owner doesn't have to worry about anything that's from the past that isn't their responsibility that could come back to at least cause them some inconvenience. Of course. So yeah. um, some of them are small and some of them are very large and, yeah. and they, they really run the gamut. So um, depending on the specific property, we can go over in great detail with the customer what those things are. But you Got know, it. you don't wanna be getting bills or notices um, from government organizations, the IRS, you know, because yeah. when somebody doesn't pay um, a particular bill or a tax bill, for instance, that follows them in any property they own. So um, we have to make sure that those are all released properly and legally so that the new owner doesn't ever have to worry about it. Got it. And yeah, whatever you can do to keep me out of, you know, in the good graces of the IRS, you're my BFF That's for life. Right. I love it. <laughs>
Um, so can, can you tell, explain the differences, like different types of escrows? Like Right, that, that's a great question because we actually get that a lot. Buyers um, have a lot of confusion about the word escrow because mm -hmm. lenders use that word as well yeah. when they're referring to an impound account. Okay. So um, impound accounts are um, often used um, with mortgages to collect a portion of the payment for okay. insurance or taxes so that the lender makes those tax and insurance payments on the homeowner's behalf. Okay. The monies that are collected go into an account called an escrow account Got it. Okay. or an impound account. Got it. That's totally separate from what I do. Okay, that's a good like breakdown of what mm -hmm. that is. So then, and then so, okay, so that's the two differences of the escrows. That's right. Got it, okay. Um, and then I know you mentioned you know, keeping, you know, protection we've used several times as far as, you know, kind of what you do. So what, like, what, wire fraud? Like, we mm -hmm. hear this a lot. I hear it a lot, you know, um, how to protect yourself against it. So, like, what are the best ways buyers and maybe even sellers can protect mm -hmm. themselves from such things as wire fraud? Or maybe there's something else I'm, I'm missing as yeah, well. Yeah, no, it's um, buyers and sellers are probably the, the primary people that need to be concerned, but real estate agents as well. So the number one way we are seeing wire fraud, wire fraud take place is um, through hacked email accounts. Okay. So what might happen is somebody like, like me at a title company might send um, wiring instructions through email to a customer. If that email is intercepted through an email address that's unsecure, which often is the case with real estate agents using um, internet-based email accounts, mm -hmm. they can the criminal can take the wiring instructions, mm -hmm. modify them to look exactly the same, only put their bank account information on it, mm -hmm. send it right off to the customer, spoofing your email address to make oh, wow. it look like it came from you, wow. and they send their money off to you know a foreign bank account or wherever. Yeah. It can be really hard um, and often um, never recoverable. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we do everything on our end to um, give out wiring instructions in only secure manners. Mm. We um, at First American Title, for instance, and I think the case with a lot of title companies now, yeah. um, we have secure transaction portals where okay. people can register and see information and documents like wiring instructions so they're not being shot around through emails. Um, so th the number one thing I would say for buyers is to double check the wiring information you receive in a transaction verbally with your escrow mm. officer on a phone call where you have called them on a number you know. You don't get the phone number off the wiring instructions yeah. because you could be calling the criminal and yeah. verifying his account. So so you kind of just do want to take that extra step. It's worth it. Okay. It's maybe the biggest transaction of your life. So yeah. I'd rather somebody call me six times at the bank to make sure that it's me yeah. um, than, than have that oopsie. Yeah, mm -hmm. so essentially it's, it's secure and then you can kind of double secure by calling the escrow officer. That's to right, confirm. that's right. Yeah. And okay. and I, I have seen, unfortunately, many cases where people at title companies around the country um, just, it's user error kind of thing. Maybe yeah. they meant to send it secure, but they don't. Yeah. And then it goes into, into the wrong hands. Yeah. Um, and sellers, they get their proceeds often via wire. Okay. I want to stress that wire transfers themselves are safe and secure, okay? okay? Yeah. It's yeah. it's the method in which the account information is received that's okay. dangerous. Once you go to the bank and you have the right account information, the wire itself is very safe. Yeah, is there a way, um, kind of off the wall question here, but is there a way to determine based off of what the email address looks like? Like, isn't, isn't it usually a funky email address? Yes, but they have gotten so good at disguising them oh, wow. that it's pretty easy easy to miss if you don't know. It's like, okay. if you and I are emailing all the time, you yeah. know what my yeah. first AM email address yeah. looks like. Of course. But if somebody puts just a dot between first, sure. and, you know what I'm saying? They can they can make it look really close. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, anything else in the escrow? I mean, just what else would you like to add that's like pertinent to that process that, you know, the, the common mm -hmm. consumer doesn't know they need to know mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and might just and might want to know at the same time. Right. I would say um, that you should see your your title and escrow person as another member of your team. Uh, we are there to support everybody in the transaction. We are a neutral third party. We're not in it to protect one person over the other. We're really looking out for 
everybody's best interest. So yeah. see us as a resource to ask questions about title, about um, documentation. Um, we can't, you know, we can't give legal advice. Yeah. But we actually have a lot of insight into, you know, how to hold title in your trust as it pertains to our specific transactions. And if we don't know the answer, we have a really good handle on resources to yeah. point people in the right direction. And since we are um, kind of that point in the transaction that is making contact with all the other pieces and players, yeah. we're talking to the lender, we're talking to both sides, we're talking to transaction coordinators, we typically have a pretty good sense of what's going on overall. Yeah. So buyers and sellers should feel really comfortable and confident speaking to their escrow person yeah. like they would speak to their agent. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, definitely teamwork definitely makes the dream work. There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, you know, whether you're the lender, the escrow officer, or the realtor, I think all three of those are going to be huge when mm -hmm. it comes to the success of, you know, both parties, parties the seller and the buyer side. Um, uh, I will ask a question that's not necessarily related to escrow, mm -hmm. um, but I'm just curious. I mean, I think a lot of people out there want to figure out how to potentially build wealth through real estate. Mm -hmm. So do you have any, you know, your, any, any advice, insight, inspiration, anything that you think that people need to start doing, need to stop doing, any anything yeah. that they can do to, um, to build wealth through real right. estate. Like, so what do you see out there? I know you you are friends with a lot of experts that probably have a lot more financial advice than I do, but sure. I can tell you in general, something that I feel really confident in saying is that sometimes things can look a little scary out there, and like when people see high interest rates, for instance, they can be scared off. But if you're in a position with enough capital to be looking at the idea of investment property, yeah. Don't be necessarily turned off by things looking a little scary because that's that's when you might have opportunities yeah. that other people are missing. Yeah, for so. sure. And I typically like to ask this to like lenders, but I think mm -hmm. that you're, I mean, we're all one team. Mm -hmm. We're all in the real estate space together. We're all extremely knowledgeable. That's why you're here. You're extremely knowledgeable. So. Obviously, no one's going to hold you to it. But what do you? Everyone's trying to predict. What does 2023 look like? So, mm -hmm. what do you? What, is, what does that look like for you in the real estate space? I know you're on the escrow side mm -hmm. of things, but what do you? What do you think? What's your predictions? Oh, it's hard. I, okay, I'm not even going to make a prediction, <laughs> but I'll like my vibe. That <laughs> What's your vibe? Let's let's the vibe get the vibe that going. I'm feeling is that um, things will probably start to kind of get a little bit more sense of normalcy. Um, like maybe after the first quarter into the second quarter. That's kind of my feeling. Yeah. But again, I'm not a financial planner or, a, <laughs> yeah. or, an, or an investor myself yet, I hope one day. Yeah. Um, right yeah. now, I just own my own home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's enough yeah. responsibility for So me. you're an expert in something. You're doing yeah, something hey, right. I made yeah. it that far. There you so. go. I love it. I love it. Um, and I mean, you know, anything else that you might want to add or, you know, is any anything else you think you, they might want to know out there or is that pretty much it for you don't be afraid to ask questions yeah. there's no stupid question we don't expect in our industry yeah. none of us expect a buyer or seller to know all the answers yeah. and i know it's a very um it's an anxiety provoking experience for a lot of people yeah. being in escrow um they're worried if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing yeah. call yeah yeah we'll help you through it we're a team i love that i mean with that being said like where's the What's the best way for them to call you? Like, how, I mean, this is a perfect time to share <laughs> where to reach out to you. Um, you. I don't know, Instagram, Facebook, I don't yeah, know. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I, I try to keep my social media well, I don't have really any social That's media fair. because I like to keep my personal time with my girls. Yeah, separate from the high stress uh, work environment that I, I have it. during the day. But, um, and while I was preparing to meet with you today, I realized that I'm going to be celebrating my 10 year anniversary in title insurance industry oh, this spring. That's Thank awesome. you. So, um, so I work at First American Title. Okay. Um, I can be reached at team Rebecca at firstam.com. Awesome. And um, yeah, my phone number 707-577-1113. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. And I really firmly believe why you were an actor and voiceover actor a while back. You're great. So, oh, wow. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you got the voice. I'm like, <laughs> I need to figure out how to get my voice like that. that good, so. But no, thank you for your time and thank you for showing up. I really appreciate nice it. Nice to be with you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Take care.